What's up fam, welcome back to the channel. We are back doing a little kind of gear review video today. Overwhelming, overwhelming number of questions on my TikToks and my Reels about this 360 camera. So we're gonna get into it a little bit more today, do a deeper dive into what it takes, where it's mounted, how to edit with it, all the things 360. Let's go right now. Before we even get into the video, do me a favor. Are you subscribed? We are trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. It's not ridiculous to ask you to subscribe. Please subscribe. Give the video a like at the end because I know you're going to like it and uh, leave a comment. I always go back and respond to all of them personally, myself. So leave a comment about this video and if you like the 360 camera. So what we're talking about today is the Insta360 ONE X2. Insta360 ONE X2 is what we're talking about today. You can see the whole thing is smaller than my hand. It basically comes with the camera, which you can see it's got these kind of fisheye lenses on both sides and this pretty cool selfie stick that you just screw right into the bottom, standard camera mount, and boom, it goes way long. I think this, yeah, that's, I don't know, how tall is that? I'm 5'9", let's just say it goes about five feet, maybe. Now, what else do you need? Let's talk about that before we do anything else. What you're gonna need is extra batteries. So I got these actually on Amazon. These are not Insta360 batteries, they're Wasabi Power. And this little charger came with them. It just goes into a power block and you can have these batteries. They look very similar. They're a little bit different, as you can see. The Wasabis have the little silver tabs and the One X2 battery has these little plastic tabs. That's about the only difference. They seem to be working well as third-party batteries go. So get yourself some extra batteries. Uh, the other thing you need is, if it doesn't come in the kit, is a memory card. These are micro SD, super tiny. <laughs> this one is a 128 gigabyte. If you're gonna leave a bunch of footage on there, I'd probably suggest getting an even bigger one. And you're also gonna need either an adapter or you're going to need some sort of dongle that can read this card when you do your editing. So that's important as well. So that's pretty much all you need really to get started. Uh, what's cool is when you're holding this uh, selfie stick, the software that I'm gonna show you in just a minute actually makes the selfie stick disappear. So that's kind of cool. But if you wanna not be holding it during a show and you're trying to mix with both hands like me, you can do a couple of different options. One, you can go get yourself a, a cheap uh, camera tripod. This one's actually way too heavy duty for such a tiny camera. So get yourself a, a cheaper version of this on Amazon. Uh, it's got this threaded adapter on the end. This is pretty much standard camera mount. Again, you would take your selfie stick off, put your camera right there, boom, set it up in front of your booth or wherever you want it. Um, I would do it somewhere within you know, arm's reach so you can just hit record. I don't let it run the entire show. I kind of reach over during peak moments in the night, hit record. Sometimes I've missed some great stuff by doing it that way, but it would fill up that 128 gig card real fast uh, if I just let it run the whole show. So. These are the items you need. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I mount it personally on my booth. Uh, it is a little adhesive tab that I actually permanently mounted to the Bun Gear Command Center. I'll show you that in just a second. And of course, down below will be the link to buy it. Okay, so a lot of people been asking, where do you put the camera? And so I have it attached right here to the Bun Gear Command Center. It's bungear.com. Command Center freaking rocks, you need one. Uh, we're shooting this in July of 2022. If you order now, you can get it uh, probably the end of August 2022. We still have a few left out of the 100. Bungear.com, enough of that. All right, moving on. So this, the link will be down below, is just a little adhesive camera mount. You can see where I actually drilled through it and then permanently mounted it to here. So that space is for my sound switch antenna and that powers the antenna. This is just a little USB-C charger for my iPad that I rigged up in here. And then this is where I'm going to show you, I put this little camera nub, if you will. So basically it just, you've got this little ring, 
you got this part this kind of goes down into that hole and then you can kind of tighten it up at whatever angle you want and then all i do is take the stick and the 360 cam and screw it right on top and then kind of sometimes mess around with the angle a little bit i usually don't even put this up until dancing starts and then depending how high I want it to go. You know, sometimes I'll shoot here, almost like head level. Sometimes I'll go crazy high and try and get literally like the whole scene, um, you know, and just kind of, like I said, turn it on and off throughout the night. So that way I'm DJing, I can just reach over, hit, hit record, blah, 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 turn it off, blah, blah, blah. And that's how I mount it. Link down below. All right, so I'm not gonna get into all the intricacies of the settings and the menu and everything else like that. You can do a little bit of research on your own, find better settings for low light, or if you wanna change this, that, and the other, you can even do time-lapse videos and things like that. But basically, once I set it up on my DJ booth and screw it into the adapter that I showed you guys, uh, I just reach over and click the button right here on the front. You'll see the blue light come on. It'll say starting recording. You can kind of get a little preview here inside the screen. And then I'm just letting it run. You know, the people are out here dancing. I'm DJing, it's getting everything. It's getting me DJing. It's getting the crowd out there. You can get some amazing shots. You can see some incredible things that you miss if you're looking down or searching for a song with this camera. And so then I'll, every once in a while, especially like during a ballad or something, I'll reach over and just kind of click the same button. Boom, it stops recording. It shuts it down blue light will go off and I'm letting it chill because sometimes it can overheat. Uh, sometimes obviously you can fill up the memory card. Sometimes you can burn through a battery. So I just kind of turn it on and off throughout the show. Now, a lot of people have been asking me like, how does the footage look like, you know, a drone is flying around or is somebody running around with, with the selfie stick, you know, out in the crowd like, woo woo. No, it all has to do with their proprietary software. It's called Insta360 Studio 2022. And so basically what you're gonna do is you got your micro SD card. And if your computer has a dongle or a slot for this, you can use that. Or I talked about this a little bit earlier. This is a micro SD adapter. Basically your SD card just goes inside of a larger card and then this is one of the newer macbook pros and then i'm just going to put this in the side in order to access the files that i shot at the last wedding so basically i took the card put it in the side and i'll go here to finder and 360 cam dcim camera one here are my clips so i'm just going to do a little shift click grab them all, and then I'm just gonna drag them into the software. They load up, and you can actually see the stuff that Jeb and I just were using to test shoot, making this video. And you'll see, now I can start to move this around. You can see how the selfie stick disappears in my hand. There's Jeb filming me. Um, and these were just quick little clips, right? You can see the studio here. I'm gonna be completely transparent with you guys here. A couple things. Number one, I'm not a big fan of editing. Number two, I don't have time for editing. And number three, Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com is your friend. There are plenty of editors out there that know this software very well and for not a lot of money will edit your clips. I would suggest using that. But if you want to use this, tons of tutorials on YouTube, I'm not gonna get into it today. But basically the premise of this software is that you can pick where you want the camera to let's just use the term fly so as i'm looking through this footage you know let's just say this was dancing footage and i see a girl head banging i'm like oh i want that i can basically place the cursor there put a dot there so that the camera flies to her and then say i want it to fly back to me boom i can put the dot back on me so that's the premise of this software again there are in-depth tutorials all over youtube i'm not going to get into it but that is how i get that flying look around the room is I'm using Insta360 Studio 2022, which is, Jeb, to my knowledge, the only way to really edit these 360 degree videos. They have a plugin with Premiere Pro too. And they have a plugin, as Jeb just told me, with Premiere Pro too. So if you're a 
Adobe, is that what that is? Premiere Pro user, they have a plugin that you can use for people that are more comfortable with that. But for just casual editors, you can use this. I learned it. Uh, I'm not great at it. Again, that's why I turn over things that I can't do or don't want to do or don't have time to do to third party people. Fiverr is your friend. Or if you've got somebody like Jeb and his team that helped me out, uh, he hired a guy on his team to go through and sift through the footage and pull some great 360 videos that I love to share with you guys. So that's what you need. That's how it gets edited and how to mount it. Man, I think that's about it. So I hope that gives you guys a little bit more of an in-depth look at what I'm using, where I'm mounting it, how it gets that kind of fly around look. Again, if you really want to get into the details of the editing, I'm not your guy, but there are videos all over YouTube on how to edit Insta360 videos using their studio software. So go do a little research, you know, dig around. You're already on YouTube right now watching this. Go find some more on that. Um, I just hope that helps you guys. I think it's a great investment. I think they're around $400. You can get some really cool clips. If you don't have a team with you, like, you know, Jeb doesn't follow me to every show. And so like, we can't always get all the great clips. This is a great way if you're by yourself or with an assistant for you to get literally the entire room of the whole scene that's going on while you're creating these amazing parties and memories. So hope you liked the video. Please give me a sub. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, we're trying to hit 10K. Uh, like the video, leave a comment, and I'll respond to it, I promise. Thanks for watching. Back next week. Peace, y'all.